Welcome to this part 5 of powering up your home office lights using Power Platform. Now that we have built our logic in, um, in Azure using the logic apps for authorizing and getting the BRE token first time and then uh, retrieving that access token and uh, possibly uh, renew it if uh, needed with the refresh token, we can now move over to the user side of things. So at the user side, um, I'm planning to use a Power App and some Power Automate flows. One of the Power Automate flows will uh, call on that uh, Logic App that uh, provides the access token. So I can use that access token when I start um, uh, running commands against the Hue Remote uh, API. I also need to do some uh, configuration storage uh, on the client side. I chose to create a, a new team. Uh, and also uh, on that connected SharePoint uh, site, I created a SharePoint list. And in that list, I will store any user that connects to the Hue uh, remote API, uh, specifically the name of the user and also a whitelist identifier, which is the username we need for calling uh, the Hue remote API. So um, the first flow I need to create in Power Automate is to get that access, uh, access token and also the configuration of my Hue bridge. So uh, if I start uh, going into the Power App, this is the first screen. Uh, we will get into creating the Power App later, but this is the first screen I have. And when I start that screen, uh, it will connect to the Hue Remote API uh, with the access token. So it tries to get an access token from my Logic App. And if it can get that access token, it, it will uh, do a query against the Hue Remote API and present back the bridge configuration. And in my case, this is the name of my bridge. Uh, this is the IP address uh, internally on my local uh, network. This is the version of the API. You can see it's connected to internet and this is the device type, um, which is the device I uh, uh, type I connected uh, when I did the, the first authorization. And there are some logic behind those uh, two uh, actions at the bottom of the screen here. Uh, the first one is to connect uh, with OAuth to Philips Hue. I will get into that later, but this is the actual authorization process we built in Logic App. And this is the enable link button and whitelist user. Uh, so we will also get into that later. But uh, if you have Hue, you uh, are aware that uh, every time you buy a new light bulb or a new uh, light switch or something, you need to go down and press that button. And uh, you can actually do that uh, virtually as well, calling the API. So we'll get into all that later. But this is the configuration I get. So let's look at that flow, uh, which we will be building in this blog post, uh, uh, depending on this part. So uh, this is the Power App trigger. I am triggering that from Power App. Uh, first of all, I'm uh, doing a get command to the Logic App. Um, let's uh, be aware that I am clearing out, uh, blurring out some of the sensitive details here so that you're, you cannot call my Logic App for getting my access token. And this will return the access token via the Logic App. And then I just uh, initialize a variable where I can get the active username uh, of the uh, per person calling uh, the flow via the Power App. And then I start uh, going into that uh, user uh, list in SharePoint. So this uh, user list, it looks like uh, this. So every user that connects, uh, if I want to share that Power App in my organization, every user will have their own line in this config. Um, and the whitelist identifier is uh, also sensitive information, so I'm masking it out here. But this is the actual username uh, connected to my uh, Hue remote uh, API for, for my user. And the device type is uh, my uh, tag of the device I'm sitting on. Uh, I also prepared some uh, fields uh, for later, uh, which we will get into when we start synchronizing the presence from, from Teams. So, um, so this is the part I'm 
uh, starting to get uh, info on from um, using that uh, get item action where I've specified the name of my site address uh, and, and the name of the list and I do under advanced um, options I do a filter where a query on title should be equal to user display name so if I call that uh, action it should be filtered on my username only and um, then I do a condition if um, uh, the access token returns uh, 204 meaning no content so if I call my logic app and there is no access token stored uh, or returned from that logic app then it will return uh, no content this could mean that I haven't authorized and, and done, uh, done the first part where, where I connect to Hue Remote API. So uh, if, that's, uh, it's a, if that is correct, I will just respond back with uh, no access token and an empty body. This is the uh, JSON body I expect to get back to the Power App uh, for presenting the config on the start screen. And the next, um, uh, if I do have uh, content back I do receive an access token from the logic app then I can do a check for in that SharePoint list do yeah do I have a user in that SharePoint list uh, if that username value is empty empty from uh, from the list then uh, I have uh, uh, the possibility to just uh, return the access token uh, which will make it possible for me to create a user and whitelist that ident identifier later. But if I do uh, no here, it's not empty. I did match, I did uh, match a user uh, here, then I can get the existing config. So here I will just uh, specify uh, the URI to the remote API for you, uh, API meet you bridge. And then I get the whitelist identifier, which is the linked user for my, my user and the config. And if uh, and also I supply the access tokens as part of uh, sorry, uh, as part of the uh, authorization barrier. And then I can return back to the Power App all the configuration I need, like uh, the access token, uh, name, IP address for the bridge, uh, API version, it is connected or not to internet or remote access and so on. And I also link back the actual whitelist identifier and the device type. So that is the main idea of that, uh, that uh, flow. Uh, sorry, that flow will be triggered um, whenever I start the power app, but also I can manually click on that refresh button and it should run and uh, possibly update the status here. So that's the first um, uh, flow. There are some details here you might want to look into on the written blog post where I detail the steps and how you build it yourself. So the next time we will go into the logic behind the enabling the link button and whitelisting a user because we need to do that first time. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Thanks.